looking at uh, water temperature. The ideal water temperature is 80 degree panel temperature. And you can usually take on that 80 degree temperature and a lot of it will be is on uh, the RPA, the Radiant Panel Association, will tell you 85. And even a lot of manufacturers are still stating at 85. Now, the question that comes in, are we dealing with 85 degrees on the subfloor or on top of my floor? So the 80 degree is a general, a good rule of thumb that if you're at 80 degrees, that would allow your substrate to be somewhere in that 82 to 83 range. So then you're keeping the floor temperatures down. So when we look at a slab construction, typically the water temperature in there is going to be in there around 120 degrees. When we get into a gypsum, it'll be like 125. Now look how much that jumped up in your joist track system. That jumped up to 170 degrees. That's your supply temperature. So what is that telling you? It's telling you that on those type of systems, we are heating not only the plywood subfloor, we're also heating the wood floor as well. So when you start looking at it as, you, as doing a two system there, you're finding that in order to generate that, we have to have more heat in order to push that out. When we start asking ourselves, this is just a chart here, but you look at that you have, you know, your radiant heat uh, is a heating BTU output. And this is based off of, you know, they got 10 BTU, 15, 20, 25, 30. So when we start asking ourselves on an in-floor heat system, and in this in-floor heat system is our set point. What's our thermostat set at? Most of us, if we're doing a conventional forced air system, we're going to be between 68, and then us old people, we're about 74. So it's, it's a mindset of where our set point is on the wall. Being with in-floor heat, and the heat's coming from the floor, the distance on here hasn't changed to the floor. But the important part is, is because our comfort range is on the floor instead of like forced air system blowing up and then coming back down. So typically our set point will be usually about 68 or 65 degrees <coughs> instead of being 70. So when you look at next, you look at our set point at, si at 65 degrees, there you're looking at as your, at your uh, water temperature and you're looking at 75 degrees. So that would be is where you'd have your BTU per hour to give you your comfort is well below the 80 degrees that's required or for uh, a wood floor. So why are we over firing and getting into 85 degrees? When you look at that 85 degrees is end up, that's when you're getting into is it exceeds the, the maximum requirement surface for hardwood floors. So here you're you're going into it'll fail when you start getting in, into the into the gray, deep gray zone. So here you're already into the, the danger zone that it's going to fail. You're going to get your checks and splits. And that's why you always look at that's important on, on on the type of system that's going in to make sure that we're supply temperature, and we're going to show the value. Uh, for example, if we had a four-inch concrete slab, and in here you'll see. We're using our space tubing at 12 inches on center. We're using a set point at 65 like we just had earlier. And here's your R value when you're going back to is the values that you'd have. So you have R value 0, 0.5, 1, and ideally you're looking at 0.15 is where we want to be for our floor covering value. And then you get into the 2O and you end up with the 2.5 and 3O. So let's get into is having showing on this here that you have in order to have the 20 BTU per hour is what we talked earlier you're going back to is your 1.5 and in there it comes down to right around 117 18 supply temperature that floor is not going to see any stress from heat you'd find more stress with a large picture window shining in and having the heat from a, on a sunny day on, a, on an espresso kind of floor than you would from radiant heat. Now, if we look at, for example, why it's important to understand in our R values when we're looking at different floor covering types. So, I mean, I don't care if we're dealing with tile, don't care if we're dealing carpet or LVP or wood. 
you'll there's there's charts available to find out exactly about where that your combination will be. Mm -hmm.